Today, we have in Lenovo's new Yoga Slim 9i, their highest end consumer laptop. It's the one with that gorgeous 4K screen with a webcam hidden behind it. It has Intel's Lunar Lake processor, which is our favorite for these kinds of laptops. And boy, does it look stunning with its teal color and glass lid. But the moment you get this laptop home, you are going to find that all is not as it seems. Even worse, when you check your bank account and find out what you've paid for this laptop, you're going to be upset. Yes, it actually starts at 1750 for the 16 gigs of RAM model. So let me walk you through the high highs as well as the low lows. And then at the end, I'm going to hand over to Josh for a bit of a rant. This attractive teal chassis is certainly stunning. No doubt about it. It comes in at right around 2.7 pounds, making it pretty lightweight for a 14 inch laptop made of aluminum with a glass top. It is still a bit heavy for its size though, when you consider the Slim 7X with a larger 14.5 inch display weighs about the same amount. It feels well built, very sturdy, and it has comfortable rounded edges. I think it really seems like it was meant to be on the sales floor at a major retailer like Best Buy or something because it looks very beautiful and feels so premium. But as soon as someone would get their hands on it, they would notice the horribly obvious fingerprints on the glass lid. We're left wondering how it's gonna stay clean in the store because these were something we saw right away after using it for only a day or so. It's also a bit difficult to open with one hand due to its tight hinges. Moving on to the display. This is another place where this laptop looks very premium. It's got a 4K 120 Hz glossy OLED panel that supports pen, multi-touch, and covers a wide color gamut. This device also boasts a 98% screen to body ratio, which looks super sleek. Unlike most OLEDs, the screen door effect is minimal, which is good. That means you won't see colored pixels peeking through light colored content. We also detected minimal PWM flickering. The webcam is hidden behind the screen, so it only shows up when it is in use. This means you have the full screen available to you most of the time, except a small portion of the corners if you count the fact that its screen's rounded edges cut off part of your window. People can go either way on this one. Taylor hates it, while Josh thinks it's okay, but would still prefer it didn't have them. Lastly, it gets up to 420 nits of brightness, which is nice, but not nearly enough to combat reflections on this glossy panel. We found them super noticeable. The webcam being behind the screen also comes with some major sacrifices to its quality. Here's a very upset Josh to show you. All right, folks, here I am on the famous webcam for the Slim 9i, and it is terrible. I think the colors just shifted while I was talking. This reminds me of one of those cheap gaming laptops from five or six years ago where they didn't even care about webcams. This was before Zoom and work from home was a thing. Guys, it's just bad. The keyboard is comfortable, responsive, and just a little clicky, which I like. It has an ample 1.5 millimeters of key travel, meaning you won't feel like you're hitting the bottom of the keyboard deck when you type. Next, I personally like the silky coating they've used on the keys, as it feels easy for me to move between them without dragging. But Josh hated it, as he found it felt slippery. The keyboard layout is also not fully standard, which may lead to mispresses. The delete key is not above the backspace key, and the right arrow key is not the bottom right key of the keyboard, which are both a little strange to adjust to. This is due to some additional keys on the rightmost side, which pushes the keyboard over to the left. The backlight also bleeds around the outside of the keys quite a bit, which makes it hard to make out the key characters from many angles. The trackpad is a big disappointment at its sticker price. It's mechanical, not haptic, and it's relatively small. It also has a slippery coating like the keys. The click is accurate enough, but it is loud and cheapens the feel of the laptop. Let me be clear. It's completely fine for a laptop that costs half as much, but it's underwhelming at this price point. The ports on this laptop are very minimal. There is a Thunderbolt 4 port on either side, which is nice to see, but that is all you get. There's not even a headphone mic combo jack. On the right side, further down the laptop, you have the power button, which is easy to mispress and Josh accidentally did. Many laptops that do this require you to hold the power button for some time for it to register. Unfortunately, on this laptop, a simple tap puts it in standby. There's also a physical privacy shutter for the webcam on the right side, so ports are not great on this one. As far as connectivity goes, you get Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4. The speakers don't sound great either. They have a narrow soundstage and really lack bass. Take a listen. Looking at upgradability, it is nice that the back only has four screws, but there is a middle clip to be aware of before pulling off the back plate. The model we have in comes with a short NVMe one terabyte SSD, which can be replaced with another short one. This laptop doesn't support full-size SSDs or a secondary SSD. The battery appears to be replaceable as well, but we could not access the Wi-Fi card. 
To test Linux on this laptop, we booted into Fedora 41. Once we were in, we couldn't adjust volume, brightness, or use the webcam. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth also did not work. So this laptop was not much of a success out of the box. With a little more effort and driver updates, we feel it might be a better story. As far as performance goes, the Lunar Lake chips are known for being good in integrated graphics while struggling in multi-core to compete with modern processors. The same goes for this chip. Starting in our Geekbench benchmark, which tests a variety of common performance tasks, we see the chip does decent in single core, but just as poorly in multi-core as the other two Lunar Lake devices we are comparing it to here. Their performance is nearly identical. When we move over to Cinebench, which tests the processor when it's maxed out, we see that this one pulls ahead a bit more. But it's not by enough to catch up with more powerful processors available in cheaper devices, like the Omnibook Ultra or MacBook Pro base model. Can I just say how wild it is to be calling a MacBook Pro cheaper? Anyways, the graphics performance in this integrated GPU is pretty decent. When we look at TimeSpy, a DirectX 12 gaming benchmark, it does the best among iGPUs and thin and light Windows laptops. It does not beat out the dedicated graphics in the similarly priced ProArt PX13, but that's to be expected. In Wildlife Extreme, which is cross-platform and therefore available on macOS, the MacBooks in the ProArt do very well. Overall, this means that light gaming or creative work would be much more enjoyable on these devices than on the Slim 9i, even though its scores are still good for integrated graphics in a small laptop. When doing performance tasks like these benchmarks, we measure the temperature of the laptop as well as the fan noise it produces to get a good idea of whether it's able to remain silent and cool under load. In CPU tasks like our 10-minute Cinebench run, it stays comfortably cool on the keyboard deck and on the underside. To achieve this, it gets a bit loud and ramps up its fans. In graphical tasks, it's the same story. Super cool on the keyboard deck, but high-ish levels of fan noise. Given the levels of fan noise and its poor performance, we feel that this laptop is not suited for anyone doing any sort of intensive performance tasks. In light use, on the other hand, we never heard the fans running, so most of the people this laptop is aimed at probably won't even notice it. For battery life, the Slim 9i doesn't do as well as we expected with its Lunar Lake chip, likely thanks to its 4K screen, which is gonna demand more power. For starters, when unplugged, we don't see a drop in performance, which is good. When we run sustained high-performance tasks for 30 minutes, it drains about 40% of its battery. The other two laptops with the same chip beat it out here, as well as the MacBook Pros. In lighter use, like streaming a Netflix movie over four hours while unplugged, it still does pretty well, just not as strong as the ZenBook S14 or the MacBooks. Lastly, we look at a highly optimized use case of watching downloaded content on a loop until the battery dies. It only got 13 hours here, and apparently the laptop died at 11%, which is very unusual during this test. We reran it and got the exact same results twice. All right, time for Josh's rant. All right, thanks, Sierra. If you haven't realized from the tone of her voice or how she handed off to me, we are really disappointed with this laptop. We were originally super excited to get it in. It looks stunning. It is incredibly well built. Its edge-to-edge -edge 4K display is beautiful to look at and its keyboard is very comfortable. These are all factors a shopper would definitely notice when it's on display at a major retailer. But the moment you get this laptop home, every positive I just mentioned falls apart. It is an absolute fingerprint magnet. Its screen is too high resolution for its size and it just ends up draining the battery faster. Its display has a very glossy coating, so you'll be distracted by reflections if you use it anywhere near a window or a bright light source. Its webcam behind the screen, it certainly sounds innovative, but it is absolutely garbage and unusable. That comfortable keyboard has bad light bleed around the keys. Guys, I could go on, but the final nail in the coffin is its price. It is outrageous. It starts at $1,750 for the 16 gig of RAM model and goes up to $1,900 for the 32 gig, which by the way, nobody should buy. That's because this laptop's performance, it just doesn't make sense to pair it with that much memory. Now folks, you can buy the ZenBook S14, which net net is an equivalent laptop for $350 less. Lenovo's own Slim 7X, much cheaper with a larger and brighter display. That laptop, of course, does use the ARM version of Windows, so only buy it if you're sticking to basic applications and web browsing, which guess what? Most people who are considering this laptop probably are. In fact, folks, at this laptop's MSRP price, you can buy a MacBook Pro 14 with a base M4 chip, which is so much better than this laptop, it is not even funny. Heck, you can buy Sierra's favorite laptop, the Pro Art PX13 with 32 gig of memory, a much more powerful AMD processor and dedicated graphics for less than the price of this laptop with 16 gig. What are we talking about here? 
This is disgraceful, and I feel heartbroken for the mums and pups that will be in a retail store paying top dollar for this laptop when they could so obviously be saving money for effectively the same product or spending the same money for a much better laptop. And that is exactly why this channel exists and why we've launched our own laptop buying website. On our website, we help you find the best laptop for you based on your specific use case and the amount you want to spend. We also help you find the best place to buy the laptop by linking to the retailer offering the best deal. And we even highlight the best time to buy by tracking its price across retailers. So go check it out at justjosh.tech. It is quickly becoming the hub for laptop buying. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and we will catch you later.